Good please. morning, colleagues. My name is Anastasia Alexandrovich. I represent Press Club Belarus and the Belarus in Focus initiative. Today, together with the new ideas partners, we'll have a presentation of the research paper regarding the influence of sanctions on the Belarusian regions. I would also like to remind you that you can choose the English track if you would like to listen to us in English. We also have a broadcast on YouTube. I would like to present to you our colleagues, Sergora Stapenia, research director of the New Ideas Center. Good morning, Rhor. Anton Rodnyakov, director of the New Ideas Center. Good morning, Anton. Good morning. And uh, and Nadia uh, Khorshanov, the senior researcher of the Center for New Ideas. Today, uh, they will tell us about the research result as the format for today's meeting. Obviously, you'll have introductory words of the speakers, then the presentation. You'll be able to raise your hand to ask questions or write your questions in the Zoom. Those of you who have not remain, renamed yourself in the Zoom, by stating your first and last name and your media outlet name please do that it would be great to understand who is asking the question Rehor, the floor is yours thank you good morning anastasia good morning everyone i would like to thank the press club and our partners for organizing this event i would also like to thank the conrad Adnau foundation which is sponsoring this research paper I would like to say a few words about the, our decision to write this uh, paper, why it's important now, and then I'll give floor to my colleagues who did the research. For us, it's important to understand what is happening in the regions. Since we, uh, we see there's some misunderstanding about what is happening outside Minsk, and there's understanding uh, that the difference between uh, Minsk and the regions is increasing. The New Ideas Project is writing substantially about this. This year we have published research about what affects Belarusians, what they're worried about. We also published the paper about the rate in other Belarusian cities. So this is a major part of our research priorities. It would talk about why we decided to understand how sanctions affect the regions. Uh, the sanction packages is one of the major things happening or effects in Belarus in 2021. So, but the influence on the Belarusian reality and Belarusian economy are unclear. We constantly hear some contradictory statements about the how the sanction packages affect their economy. Inside the Lukashenko's regime, there's no clear-cut understanding. On the one hand, they say that uh, the sanctions may destroy the Belarusian sovereignty, uh, just like Vladimir Maki said. On the other hand, they say that the uh, sanctions are a great idea the, to develop the economy. Among the dem democratic politicians, there are a number of contradictory statements about the sanctions. Some say that they negatively affect the regime. Others say that the sanctions basically are toothless. There's clearly lack of understanding of how sanctions affect the economy, let alone its influence on the political system of Belarus. Anyway, we can say that the sanctions will negatively affect the economy. That's for sure. What Anton is writing about in the paper uh, is that this difference may vary depending on the industry sectors and uh, uh, some economic enterprises. These sanctions may vary and their effects may vary. Different enterprises are affected by different sanctions. Again, this will influence the enterprises and will show how sensitive they are. Today, we'll talk more about how sanctions influence the regions. I come from a post-sanctioned uh, sanctioned 
town of Saligorsk. So I definitely see that the influence on Saligorsk will be and is significant. Uh, while influence on other cities or towns may vary. So it's important to discuss today how sanctions will affect concrete regions, concrete cities and concrete enterprises. This is exactly what our paper, uh, Anton's paper is dedicated to. Namely, they will discuss how the sanctions affect regions, rayons and enterprises. That's it for me. Thank you once again for inviting me for, uh, to hold press conferences on your platform. Hopefully the next day will be even better for all of us. I give floor to Anton, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, I need a couple of seconds to share the presentation and we'll, we'll start. Thank you, Rehor, for the great introduction. In the framework of our research, we didn't want to understand how all sanctions affect all the enterprises. We started this research before the fifth sanctions package was introduced. So here we're discussing in front of the four packages. So, but I think the fifth region would not really change the picture since it uh, doesn't affect the regional enterprises. We conducted the research at the end of November, at the beginning of December. It consisted of two parts. The first part was about the economic effect of the sanctions. And, and, well, in the second part, I'll tell you more about the first part. Well, in the second part, we were trying to understand how sanctions affect the society and the community, of course, because this is one of the polarizing topics these days. Well, it was ob obvious that the attitude to sanctions is one of the most important divisions line between the uh, protest proponents and opponents. Uh, it is the protesting audience that were, was, of our, in, was of interest for us. About uh, 4,300 people took part in the research in the survey. And I will tell you more how people perceive the sanctions. Sanctions influence the regions in the two ways. The first is about the sanctions enterprises in the mono cities. It is the Soviet heritage and due to it that the Belarus has a lot of mono cities, big industrial enterprises that employ a big number of people. They are all expert oriented. When such an enterprise is under sanctions, majority of them can be influenced by the sanctions. On the other hand, a big number of people who are employed there are also affected and saw their lives. In terms of freons, it is the Saligors region that is most affected here. 24% of people employed there will work in Beliskali. It is 24% of people employed in Saligors region. Then it is followed by Zhodina, Smolivichsky Rayon, Polotsk Rayon, Naftan, Bobrois Krayon and Mozerion. Majority of them work in the sanctions enterprise, sanctions enterprises. Uh, what could be the result is that the, the salary will go down at the enterprises, the unemployment level will also go up. Very often, the, these enterprises they sponsor the local budgets, sponsor sporting, sports clubs, social events in the local towns. So with the economic situation decreasing the, at these enterprises, the life of the community will be negatively affected. 
this is what the map looks like. You can see the points uh, marked with navy blue. It is where the sentient enterprises are located. With the, the dark blue with light, we see the places where the big enterprises are and the turquoise is uh, where the enterprises are that do not form the cities. If you look at the mosaic Saligorsk and Polotsk region, you'll see that around them there are rayons with uh, lower salaries. It means that, that these enterprises, they work people not only from these rayons, but also the, the regional drivers of growth. People from neighboring regions come to work there. So it turns out that the sanctions also affect the regional growth drivers. It means that the economic situation will worsen, not only in the cities where the sanctions enterprises are located, but also the neighboring regions. If we look at Uh, the enterprises and the centers will see that in Minsk, which is the most diversified city with the most diversified economy, there's the biggest number of such enterprises. So thanks to its diversification, Minsk will be affected the least. These are our conclusions about the first part. Uh, the regional growth points will turn into the stability points. Minsk will be affected less. This will be the first blow. The second is about the Republic or national budget and the uh, subsidized regions. Turned out that the taxes, they come to the national budget. And since export oriented enterprises will be affected the most, there's a risk of the national budget. The half of all the rents in Belarus receive half of its budget from the national budget. Turns out the national budget has issues. It will not support the regions that are lagging behind the way it could have been or could be. So here's the a list of the rayons that receive 70% of their budget from subsidies. They are affected the most by the sanctions due uh, to the national budget being affected. Here's the map. You can see what it looks like. On the whole, these rayons are placed in the Gomel and Magilov regions. And some of them in the Chernobyl affected zone. Also, many of them are located in the Vitebsk region. If you look at the map, you'll see that next to the Polotsk, Sharkovshina, those are poor regions, which are heavily subsidized from the national budget. On the one hand, they receive less money from the national budget. The local labor situation will worsen. And also, their life will be affected, negatively affected in general. What are the conclusions here? The possible decrease of the national budget will affect the subsidies of the half of the rayons that depend on the subsidies. Like in Babruisk and Orsha, they're vulnerable because they have big sanctioned enterprises and they have very weak local budget. So the sanctions will affect the weakest points and the biggest points. Successful brands will be less successful. And small disclaimer is needed here. The, these are the potential effects of the census. We did not try to analyze the economy of each town because it's a very time consuming and it's unclear what the final effects of the new packages will be. 
it's an unclear how the enterprise will try to adapt. We believe there are four ways that the authorities can mitigate the event assumptions. The first is the flexibility of business models and geography of its partners. How much the business models can allow for enterprise to change its partners, where they are placed, other in the countries that have joined the sanctions of the West or other in other regions. Do they have short-term or long-term contracts? So it all depends on the business models of the enterprises. The second point is about uh, uh, margin of safety at the a level, at the local level, because the local enterprises have some resources and some of them have safety margin. How many loans they have? So it all depends on the local conditions. The third point is about the help from the center, from the national budget, how much the national budget will be be able to help the enterprises or the regions where the social tensions will arise. Yesterday we heard the news about the possible loan of 3.5 billion. It shows that the authorities is trying to react to the sanctions in order not to have the situation in the country destabilized. And the last point is to active uh, contraction of the authorities to the sentence, how much the authorities will be trying to create good like gray schemes to bypass sentences. We don't know how much they will do that. So these four elements will define the effectiveness of the sanctions. That's it from me about the economic sanctions block and we'll discuss how sanctions affect the protesting crowds and the communities. Thank you, colleagues. I would like to say a few th words about how people perceive the sanctions. What are we basing our conclusions on? It is in two projects. The data that we receive within the, the two projects. First is the Chatham House data that present the opinions of the city communities that have online access and the popular survey project that uh, present the data from the protesting crowds, the protesting communities. I don't think I should dwell on this. We'll concentrate on the content. Indeed, even though the Belarusian economy did not really feel this effect of the sanctions, the sanctions are, have affected the media space, at least the media space. And about 90% of the protest community are actively following this topic and trying to understand how this uh, will affect Belarus. What will it, it bring to Belarus in the near future? People start to have their own opinion about these issues. The opinions are totally opposite, particularly about the what or who the sanction should be applied to. According to Chatham House, there's a big split, society split in this respect. While the, the point economic sanctions are more acceptable, 44% of the surveyed people are ready to support them, and 32% the people are against it. In terms of wider sanctions, situation is the opposite. 51% are against 
while 24% uh, support this. The majority of people agree that the census should be applied to the, the businesses supporting Lukashenko and the businessmen uh, from his near circle around him. What we see from the uh, slide, about 70% support such sanctions, followed by the law enforcement agencies. Others are uh, uh, financial banking sector, state enterprises, officials, all process enterprises, Kali, uh, potash, fertilizers, producers, and others. How are people, uh, how do people perceive the, from the emotional point of view, the importance of the sentence? It's all about hope. It's not about being rational. It's about the possibility of uh, there being emotional mobilization. People perceive the sanctions as one of the possible and necessary elements because the, the toolkit for contracting the regime is quite limited. Sanctions are still uh, perceived at the, name, at the emotional level. If we talk about the concrete options of, or concrete consequence, people, as we see it, understand the pluses and minuses of the sanctions. The people understand that sanctions, or they believe that the sanctions will not greatly affect the situation. Uh, in terms of the political prisoners getting free, uh, Lukashenko leaving his post or engaging in talks, people believe that the probability of this is quite low. The only positions here being that uh, the majority of the political prisoners may uh, be let go, set free, not all of them, and uh, the sanctions will force Lukashenko to engage in negotiations. But again, I would like to highlight that the Belarusians, they uh, understand that these chances, uh, chances of this is quite low. There are other options here. Uh, asked, how do you assess the possibility of the chance of the following uh, results of the introduced sanctions with one being the low probability, five being high probability. So they show that uh, people expect some economic crisis to in the country and uh, they expect that it will affect the state enterprises and affect the people who are employed by the state enterprises. About 80% of Belarusians, of the Soviet Belarusians, understand that uh, there will be no instant political dividends. And the effects of the sanctions will be first and foremost in the political sphere. These effects of the sanctions are not abstract. They understand, people understand that they will affect not only the society as a whole, not only the economy as a whole, but also the sanctions will affect each and every settlement, each and every locality. And these sanctions will somehow 
have a negative effect. Uh, half of the, of the population understand this. In terms of positive and negative influence, we can remember some words of politicians that sanctions only makes us stronger. But strategically, sanctions may positively affect the situation in the country, forcing some people to engage in negotiations. These are some shades and nuances. Next slide about the personal readiness. The sanctions will not only affect every locality, but also affect every individual. So far, people have been not just optimistic, but people are ready to except that they will ha have to have a rough time. It's uh, unclear how this stable is this trend. But currently, so far, people said that, yes, they are ready to uh, suffer in the short term and to have a rough time to achieve some long-term goals. You can see here the difference between the light blue and the black color. People believe that uh, instead changes are impossible. People understand that these sanctions will affect the, the country in the long term, but they are ready to have rough time in order to have Lukashenko removed from the post in the long term. Uh, if we sum up everything that has been said before, we may say that the first and foremost people welcome the sanctions against the, what can be called the regime, Lukashenko himself and the businesses supporting him and the law enforcement agencies. As for the others affected by the sanctions, people are not happy about that, not particularly happy about that. But the main uh, idea here, the main effect of the sanctions as of today will be the, the hope, uh, emotional perception of the sanctions that uh, sanctions will affect the situation, the situation will change. Again, I want, I want to highlight the fact that the people understand, at least the majority of them, uh, the sanctions will not uh, be followed by instant changes. And they will lead to the worsening of the economic situation, not the political one. But at the same time, people On the whole, people do support sanctions. Uh, but the situation has not been clear to everyone yet, but people support the sanctions as one of the protest moves. And they're ready to have a rough time and uh, wait. Thank you very much. Thank you for your night. That's it from us. And uh, now we can have a, the Q&A. Thank you, colleagues. I uh, can see that uh, Vadim has raised his hand. And Vadim, please introduce yourself. Uh, and then ask a question. Good morning, my, my name is Vadim Karinka. I work for Statista, and uh, which is a data aggregator, but I currently represent myself, not the country, the company I work for. 
I have a, an economic question. We just spoke about the mono cities and the uh, city forming enterprises, but uh, my question is, how much do you think the sanctions affect uh, the border regions of the city, based Grodno regions? There are uh, free economic zones in the Brest region, a lot of transit is happening there. There are some joint enterprises were uh, enterprises from formed by Belarus and uh, those from Austria, Germany and Poland. How much do you think the sanctions will affect the, these regions? A lot of people are employed there. Next week, we'll have a presentation about the Belarus cities. We will uh, touch upon that, but basically the border towns in the west are more developed uh, than those in the eastern border. It's very much connected with the fact that they have links with the European Union and the prices there, and of course, they will be affected by the sanctions. It's not that much about the uh, economic effect in the last several years before the coronavirus. A lot of tourists started visiting the Grodno region. It affected uh, the city. Uh, a new services started to appear, a new uh, hotel started to be opened. Now we can see uh, mm, that basically no tourists have visited Brest and Grodno regions in the western part of the country as a whole. Again, there's some great economy. Of course, the western cities will be affected the most, but the measure is hard to, it's hard to measure the effects. But overall, the Western part of this of the country that was more, dy more dynamic in terms of the cultural economic ties with the West will be affected by the sanctions, by the result of the sanctions. Thank you. Lyubov Bukarevich from Bukarevich from Euradio would like to answer, ask a question. Can you hear me well? I have two questions. The first is to Anton. You mentioned the possible loan of 3.5 billion US dollars. Did you try to assess how much it will save uh, us or the Belarusian authorities? Because that's exactly how much we pay uh, to repay our external debt. But we need to support the budget. I have the budget supported. How much do you think the cities and towns will be saved by this? My question is, second question is to Gennady. Uh, you said some people that are ready to have rough times to withstand troubles uh, to achieve the greater goal. But one thing is to be prepared theoretically for this. On the other hand, is to face the uh, real drop in the household incomes. Uh, household income. How do you think it will affect the mood of the people and their reaction in the future? On the whole, we did not really analyze the possible loans and how much the authorities need to, um, how much are they need, much money they need to get. We see that the, with census against the put us. Uh, enterprises, some shenzhens will be postponed until April. So we shouldn't expect any immediate effect. We shouldn't expect that some enterprises will go bankrupt in the day uh, because the economy does have some margin of safety. In terms of loan, again, we need to consider more details. When exactly it will be allocated by whom or by what, because we need to understand that one of the effects of the sanctions is that Belarus 
got rid of the uh, or is not receiving the, the um, subsidized loans from the European agencies while uh, before the EBR, EBRD was planning to help Belarusians improve the um, bridges, about 10 bridges, and they were planning to allocate the loan for that. This loan disappeared and the EBRD support dis disappeared. And uh, also uh, some roads was supposed to be reconstructed by the help of the, the World Bank and other international institutions. This will affect the quality of social life of the people. But again, we shouldn't expect uh, the immediate effect of this, that tomorrow there will be a de economic default and economic collapse. This uh, measures could take several years to show the results. I will answer the question that was addressed to me. Without a doubt, the perception of the sanctions and the, what, how exactly they will affect the Belarus after they are fully applied are two different things. There could be different attitudes to those. Exactly for this reason, I, I uh, said that it is about now. And it's unclear how people will perceive the sentence and the results of the sentence in the short and the long term. It's hard to understand how it will happen because without a doubt, there will be a comprehensive thing because the COVID will have its effects and the foreign policy dynamics is very fluid. Flexible and economic element will be also very important to understand what has happened in the country. So it's very hard to understand how people will perceive the results of the sanctions and what they will be ready for once the uh, sanctions are in full swing. Thank you very much for your replies. Thank you, colleagues. There is an, another question from Volga Pavuk, Rudabilska Pakazuha. Volga, please, you have raised your hand. Would you like to ask a question? Olga is still muted. Colleagues, do you have any more questions to our speakers? Hello. I'm sorry, I got distracted. I have two questions. Uh, we uh, communicate with people in the regions. What are your forecasts about uh, today's situation? Apart from sanctions today, we have uh, people getting sacked or dismissed in the enterprises. How much it will affect the regime? Uh, let's say if people are not paid uh, pensions or social payments due to the sentences, how it will affect the people, how it will influence their attitude towards the regime. Do you think people will, will get uh, more happy? Do you think will put them down? Well, I think neither. When we were conducting the survey of the regional issues affecting the people, we saw the big gap between the issues faced by Minsk and the regions. One of such issues and difference is that uh, there's a possibility to find a job. In Minsk, people don't find, don't see a problem finding a job. The smaller the town, the more acute this problem is. 
but at the same time, you need to understand that because this year was uh, economically quite successful and because the borders were closed, the major migration flows were political. Belarus uh, was the country that uh, many people left for political reasons. And we see the economy is slowing down. If we add to this, the big number of people that are getting dismissed for political reasons around the country, this will push people to engage in political migration to leave the country to find a job. So the probable outcome will be people living in Belarus to find work abroad. Thank you very much. I guess there are no more questions. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, if not, then uh, Anton Rukhorgenadze, do you want to add anything or should we finish our discussion for today? I think I could uh, finalize today's discussion. I would like to thank Anastasia and Press Club for organizing this event. And also would like to thank Konrad Adenauer Foundation for uh, helping publish the results of this research. I also would like to say that we are particularly interested in what those society and those journalists are interested in. So if you have some ideas about uh, what we should research, if it's about the regions, please write to Anton. If it's about the Belarusian society, please write to Gennad. Any ideas could be sent to me. I uh, will try to read everything. And uh, back to you, Anastasia. I could end on this. Thank you very much, Rihor. Thank you very much, colleagues. In the near future, we'll be sending a link to the research that we presented today to all the registered participants. Also, we have our broadcast recorded just in case. Thank you very much for joining today's discussion. Please follow the announcements and the, from Press Club. We regularly hold press conferences, expert platforms and dialogues. This is the platform where you can hear different opinions, ask questions. Thank you very much for watching our broadcast. And uh, have a great day and have a great weekend. See you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.